as we're getting ready to close, I just want to summarize, um, and I'm really about to share my heart. I want to summarize the ears, the heart, the mouth, the eyes, um, and everything we talked about. Family, we need to guard our hearts, our ears, our eyes, our mouth from strife. As a summary to everything that we talked about this whole entire month, strife is a thing that's really is, is messing with your emotions. Strife is messing with your vision. Strife is messing with how you hear things. Strife is messing with how you see things. Strife is messing up your ability to be inspired and productive. It's strife that's been the stumbling block. See, and I'm going to start speaking by the Spirit as we close this out. The Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. The, another translation says, don't be joined together with those who are inconsistent with your faith. This is very important. Faith is what you believe. See? So if anyone's or anybody has an incons if there's inconsistencies, see, we're going to find some strife. We're going to find some disagreements. And I told you guys earlier, as I go back to this slide, it says that the Lord said to Abram only after Lot had left him. Now look up. Now lift up your eyes. Now hear me very clear. I'm going to read this scripture to you, okay? The Bible says that Abraham said to Lot, please, please let there be no strife between us. He also said, let there be no disagreements among us. He said, please, let us go our separate ways. So yes, there are those who we're going to be able to do life with. But there are some people we're just going to have to separate ourselves from. And it's very, I hate to say it, but there's a very spiritual thing about separating from certain people for God to really take you where he's calling you to go. And so when it comes to really guarding your eyes, family, when it comes from, you know, really like walking in what God has for you, like, I, I need you to understand um, there are some people that we have to separate ourselves from. There are some people that they, they just can no longer walk with us because the Bible says, how can two walk together lest they agree? And so you're wondering, well, who, who do I cut off or who do I separate myself from? Who do I, who do I just let them know we need to go and separate it's those who you are in strife with? And you guys cannot find any agreements. We just can't agree here. And, and listen, that's okay. That's okay. And if, if you notice, it takes work to find out that you guys don't agree. So I'm not saying cut people off because you had a moment that felt like strife. I'm saying... If the strife continues and the root foundation is because you guys are not in agreement, you can't seem to find agreements. It's best we go our separate ways because you know what? It's not just about me doing what God's calling me to do. I need you to go ahead and do what God's calling you to do as well. And I have learned, I have learned that if you really love somebody, you would do whatever it takes for them to experience God's best, even if that means you're no longer in the equation. I say that because Abraham and Lot were relatives. Even some people in our family. I love you. But as for me and my house, we're going to go ahead and serve the Lord. And my pastor always says that there are some people that in me following God, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to unite me with them. And then there are some people in me following God and doing what God's calling me to do. Unfortunately, it's going to cause us to separate. Um, and then I, I would challenge everybody on this call. Um, we can go ahead and stop the presentation. I challenge everybody on this call to understand that Paul made it very clear. If, if, we're, if we're really trying to seek men, we're not going to really be able to follow God. And so, guys, as we're guarding these gates, see, as we're guarding our eyes, our mouth, our ears, our heart, we have to remember that most of what we're guarding ourselves from 
is the enemy's attacks and how he uses people. The enemy's going to use people to get behind our gates. And it's very important that we guard ourselves because at the end of the day, we, we are in this world, which is not of the world. But we can't escape the world. And so if we need to put some boundaries up, let's go ahead and put some boundaries up. If we need to put some restrictions in place, let's go ahead and put some restrictions in place. Because at the end of the day, this vessel we are in charge of. I can't control you and I can't control you. But what I can do is guard my heart. I can guard my eyes. And for those of you who are parents, you are the royal priest of your home. And so if that means you have restrictions on the TV, that is your home. If you have restrictions on the computers, that is your home. You raise up a child in the way that they should go, and they will not depart from it. So, yes, there will come a time where children will choose their own way, they'll do their own thing. But if you raise them right, the Bible promises that they will return. And so I encourage the parents that feel like, you know, are they doing too much? Listen, whatever God leads you to do for those children, you protect those children. Because at the end of the day, the devil attacks when the kids are kids. Most of our pain, most of our greatest wounds, most of some of the, the most traumatic and most perverted memories we have came from when we were little kids. And that's the only time when you can't guard things for yourself. Children are actually relying on their parents to put those restrictions up for them. And so I'm telling y'all, you know, it, it's, been, it's been amazing. Um, I wanted to leave a lot of time for Q&A. Um, so I, I just thank you guys again for having me. Um, I pray that that's really blessed you. Um, remember, you keep these eyes good, you're going to be good. But when we also see the things outside, that's when we're going to need vision to kick in so we can see beyond what we see. So we can live and, and literally live an abundant life because I'm telling y'all, it most of our problems came when we started looking at our problems. Peter was walking fine on water until he took his eyes off Jesus.